Patrick, are you ready? Where's Patrick? We are ready. Okay. He's he's ready to film your arrival. Yep, you're going. We're walking. Oh. <laughs> but that's fine, isn't it? All right. Will we get in trouble for this? I've also brought an extra water. It's hot outside. <laughs> no one told me it was this hot here. I'm wearing all black. At least it's airy. I just blow Good. through it. Welcome to our humble healthcare. Yeah, gosh, it's <laughs> terrible here. <laughs> Welcome to The Poison Pen. We are delighted to have with us New York Times best-selling authors Holly Jackson and Alexandra Bracken. <laughs> if this is your first time at The Poison Pen, we're going to let them have a conversation. We've allowed some time at the end for questions, but only interesting questions. Yeah. So now <laughs> no I'm going ones. to turn it over to Ale Alexandra and Holly. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, congratulations on your new release and for hitting number one on the New York Times Woo! bestseller list. Thanks, guys. That um, was exciting. We'll keep it pretty spoiler free, right? Mm -hmm. In case people have not. I'm finished. pretty tired. I've been on a long tour, yeah. so who knows what's <laughs> going to come out of my mouth. Well, I, I have know some. I pressed a button. Oh, I'm still live. Yeah. By the way, did to. you know I was British, or is anyone shocked right now? <laughs> I'm not doing. I'm not doing a bit. This is this is natural. <laughs> um, I have some questions prepared, but we're going to leave some time at the end if you guys have questions as well. So get thinking. Yeah, get thinking. They have to be really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, first question. So my pandemic book club read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, and we were all very surprised when we realized we had different versions of the book. Oh yeah. Yes. So yeah, that's I'm interesting. Wondering like. For anyone who might not know, can you talk a little bit about how you came to be published? Um, well, so I had the book deal in the UK. Um, no one really wanted it. There was only one publisher who wanted it. So um, <laughs> we're lucky. Well, uh, well, <laughs> they regret it them. now. Um, <laughs> So then they submitted to some US publishers and, and two, two wanted it. Uh, Penguin Random House wanted it and I was like, yes, but they were like, but you need to translate it to an American setting. Uh, and I was like, oh, wah, wah, but fine, I will. Um, so I basically had to edit all books of the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series twice <laughs> and translate them. But it worked out okay because now I'm bilingual in British English and American <laughs> English. That's mm. amazing to me because I've I can't remember the last time I heard of a publisher. Yeah, <laughs> like I know. They made me. That's like I mean, real trial by I fire. I don't regret doing it. It's quite fun that we have an American pip and a British pip. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit confusing, and I see some people who've bought like the UK is book one, and then like book two, they got the US version. They're like, well, why is she suddenly American? And they're like, <laughs> they're like telling me off about it. They're like, what, you, did you forget that she was British? And I'm like, no. <laughs> You bought the wrong one. This is not my problem. I know, and it got confusing for a while, too, during the pandemic, because, as you guys might recall, it was, like, hard to get books at mm. times with the printers and stock and all of that, too. So I'm not surprised people got, like, yeah. <laughs> some mixed-up issues. And then blamed me. And then blamed you, know, of course. my fault, yeah. I know. Mm. Always. Okay, so one of my favorite UK exports is the British crime procedural, the British mm. crime drama from like Broadchurch to DCI Banks yeah, to yeah. Um, we Line also of Duty. like murder across yes. the pond. Yeah, yes, we get much less of it though. I admit I have to sometimes watch these shows with subtitles because some of the more northern mm. accents are a little bit tough for me. Well, I watch everything with subtitles now. Me too. Okay. I just like it. What's when I'm about? watching my dinner and I'm like, I'll just skip ahead of the dialogue. Now I can take a bite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 
It's useful. And uh, have you ever watched Stranger Things with the subtitles on? Because they describe the sounds. Yes. It's so fun. It adds a whole other element. It's like mm -hmm. Vec Vecna squelchily squelches. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh. Yeah, and the way they so, describe the music, too, is always incredible. Yeah. It's like it's like tense, emotional, sad um, music happening. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh, I didn't real. I thought it was pretty happy. OK, got yeah. it. <laughs> It's like mm. blood everywhere, sure. Yeah, I know. Um, so where I was going with this tangent oh, yeah. was, <laughs> before I forget my actual question. Reverse it. Back so, to the question. Like my earliest memories of true crime were like gently traumatizing myself with reruns of a show here called Dateline after mm -hmm. school. Yeah, so, yeah, I know of Dateline. Yeah. What's the after school version? Oh, well, it's just the reruns basically oh, okay, okay. at 3 p.m. before your parents get home and are like, I don't oh, think you should be watching okay. this. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So what is like your first, what was like your first interaction with true crime that you really remember that got you interested in the genre? I mean, I think true crime happened later. I really, mm -hmm. I used to like sneak downstairs when my parents were watching like after nine o'clock TV, yeah. like murder <laughs> mysteries. Cause I used to live in a house where I could sneak down the stairs and like go into the living room and there was a sofa there. So if I was really quiet and didn't breathe and like hid behind the couch, <laughs> oh God, I could watch and then sneak away. I literally forgot until this moment that I used to do that. Oh I gotta tell my parents off, that is bad parental supervision. Like, do you think that they actually knew you were there and they were like, well, I don't know, maybe I'm just really sneaky, sometime. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wouldn't put that you. Yeah, I mean, actually, a lot of my stories of uh, early thriller, um, like me watching thrillers, are related to bad parental supervision. But um, <laughs> there's there's more. I, I used to watch like horror films. I used to skip school and be ill, and then I'd watch like The Ring <laughs> when I was like ten, and traumatize myself. Yeah. Um, I watched. 24 the tv show really young when i was like six i shouldn't have been watching that but i love <laughs> jack bauer so um and i was reading like stephen king mm -hmm. and harlan coburn who um i mentioned him in an event the other day and he slid slid into my dms yesterday and he Ooh. said heard you talking about me and i was like oh hey harlan <laughs> how's it going um so those were my like first first exposure to like fictional thrillers and then I mean I was a bit of a late bloomer in true crime I listened to serial maybe like a year after everyone else had listened to it and I was like this is great why is everyone not listening to this and like we did a year ago N no one to told me about it and then I just went down the rabbit hole, hole of all true crime podcasts documentaries and now I can't survive a day without a bit of murder in my ears to soothe me <laughs> Just mm. some nice relaxing it, it, it storytelling puts me to at sleep, night. I tell yeah. you. It's relaxing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like you and Harlan could be a crime fighting duo, Holly and Harlan. Well maybe I'll maybe I'll yeah. suggest it to him, yeah. Listen. We've got the connection now. <laughs> Okay, so the premise of the reappearance of Rachel Price is like brain candy to me. It's so mm. hooky. The idea of the like missing presumed dead subject of a documentary showing up as the documentary is being filmed with said family. I know, you can't write it, can it's you? So like no. I was like, oh I was <laughs> sometimes as an author you like hear about a premise and you're like, why didn't I think of that? That's yeah. one of those premises. It's so good. I often do that jealously look I know, at other people's like, concepts curse you <laughs> um some of the most interesting parts of the book for me were the discussions about the documentary itself and mm -hmm. how it was filmed and i was wondering if your experiences on set for Gro girls they Guide to did Mother, a little bit like i know what it? to call things on a camera now like lenses and stuff uh -huh. um so there's that i had my own experience where, that i could seed into the book but also my dad is a camera operator um so he's worked in that business for a while was no use to me at all with selling any of my film rights <laughs> i was like please let me be a nepotism baby no <laughs> i had to do it all of my own volition it sucked um but yeah so i i kind of let him read parts of it and i was like is this legit like i got the yeah. camera stuff okay and then he launched into a very long lecture about lenses and st and stuff and i i often do this in life i just go dead behind the eyes and yeah. i just nod in the right place and i'm like, normally i'm thinking about what i'm gonna have for dinner because yeah. <laughs> i live my life by what what i'm eating next um so yeah he, he fact checked it for me a little bit but yeah i i 
I had my own knowledge from the TV show. Um, yeah. And it was fun for me because I made the, the film crew, they're British, so that I, f for once, when I was writing the dialogue, I didn't have to be like, oh, what do Americans call this yeah. thingy? <laughs> I just go with that one. I did notice that and wondered if there was like a connection yeah. there. But I just wanted a bit of easy dialogue without yeah. having to second guess myself the whole time. Did you? Did your UK publisher want you to set it in the UK? No. Did they make you do the I've made it very clear I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> I feel like I've put my are, foot down. Yeah. I'm a fake American now. I think you yeah. are at a point in your career where yeah. you can like make that demand. I don't want to double edit. It was hell. <laughs> I, oh my gosh, I'm so amazed that you had to do that. I was You were such a champ. Like, yeah, no, I am. I am a champion. It was, <laughs> yeah. You're right. Um, the hero that um, Scottsdale deserves but doesn't <laughs> need. Because <laughs> I, like, I have never had to, like, do the UK version of English, the British, British English no. translation. But yeah, it's rough. Some poor editor somewhere does it for me. Oh, what they, like, add use into your yeah, colors yeah. and flavors and whatnot mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah I, I like to do it myself now. <laughs> you're like just get the satisfaction of deleting the u sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. well yeah. now i just type straight american to start with <laughs> and i even because in the uk we actually use different dialogue um tags like here you use the double yeah on dialogue in the uk it's a single quotation mark around dialogue Weird, I know. I don't know if I've ever noticed that before. It's true. Interesting. I know, but I've now trained myself to so alike and yet one. not. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so different, but so. Do you want to talk about the TV show a little bit? I think everyone probably wants me yeah. to, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I have to be very careful about things I say. So, um, uh, yeah. So if she accidentally slips up, nobody tweeted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody posted well, on no, TikTok. I think this is being recorded to be put oh, on yeah, the that's internet. True. So we're screwed. Um, It'll get bleeped out. So the TV show is coming at some point. I can't tell you when. I can't tell you where. I can't tell you how. But you will be able to watch it. You don't need to pirate the BBC version. I've seen you all <laughs> in my comments. Don't think I don't see them with people saying like, oh, you can just VPN or we'll pirate it. Don't worry. And I'm like, no, guys, <laughs> don't commit crimes. But also, I wouldn't leave you hanging like that. So you will be able to watch it at some point in the near-ish future. Again, no, no specifying. Otherwise, they will bundle me into a white van and kidnap me. <laughs> But yes, you will be able to see it. And we had the best time making it. It was stressful, I'll put it this way. Um, uh, and you think you're impatient for the show. I've known about it for ages. Yeah, I, I like sold the rights like before the book even published in the UK. So it's been so, like five years in the making. Wow. Yeah. How, like how long was the shoot for the show? It was about 12 weeks. That's a, I mean, that's a sizable chunk of your yeah, life. It was, cool. it was sizable, yeah. And I went to set maybe like one or two days every week. Um, got in the way a lot. <laughs> there was this one lighting guy, um, and I got in his way so much that I kind of turned it into a game where I was like, let's see if I can just get in this guy's way like 40 times today. He didn't find it very funny. <laughs> I did. You've got to keep yourself entertained on set. Um, yeah, so I have so many behind-the-scenes photos and videos. I just can't share them yet until the show is out. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you play a role in casting at all? Did you yeah. get to give feedback on it? Yeah, cool. I, I could veto. I could I could pick. I mean, Emma Myers, I was her strong champion. As soon as her name came up in the room, I was like, yes, that's the one. Done. Easy. We've done it. Um, so, yeah, I, I did... I did lord over the casting process a bit, and we <laughs> were, uh, I'm not gonna take full credit for Emma Myers because we had a casting director as well, but um, I'm gonna, because none of you were there, so. <laughs> um, and she is so amazing. Like, she's even better than you think she's gonna be. Like, I'm so um, mad you can't tell us when it's coming, because I'm like, oh, I'll watch it. It's coming, that's all I can say, it's, it's coming. coming. It's good to know that we will be able to see it, and we don't have to You don't have to become VPN. pirates, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I loved Belle's character in this book. She's like a little bit prickly and, but she's like, not just a little thing. bit. She's full prickly. I was trying to be nice to Belle because it's understandable mm. why Speaking she's of prickly. prickly. You have so many cactuses here. <laughs> C cacti. Cacti. Yeah. yeah, that's strange for me. And my publicist, because uh, I was looking at them, I was like, oh, I just want to. And she's like, no, don't touch it. <laughs> I'm gonna. Did you when know? I, if I walk past one and, and uh, no one's looking, I'm going to give it a little pet. 
Okay, did anyone else have desert survival lessons when they were in elementary school? Was that like a 90s thing here? Is one of the lessons don't touch a cactus. Yes, but there are like different kinds of little prickers that can get you. So some you have to remove with like combs because they have hooks in the end. Uh, are, yeah, it's maybe gnarly. it's not worth it just yeah. to touch one. Yeah. It's just really it's inviting. Like, but it's a no. rite of passage, I think, too. For every Arizona kid, every visitor, you got to accidentally lean back against a cactus at least once. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I'll just do it accidentally. <laughs> okay, so. What were we do? Prickly. Prickly Reverse. Bell. Cactus. Okay. Prickly. Well. Bell. 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 Okay, got it. I, like, one of. I like love that she is ultimately famous for something that she can't even remember, but it's also kind of gone on to define her life in yeah. a way, uh, you know, unfortunately for her. And I'm wondering, how did you approach writing her character? Like, what was, did you have an original inspiration for it or? I mean, I guess my jumping off point is I really wanted her to be like opposite to Pip. Like she's almost the anti-Pip. Like if Pip were the main character of this book, it would be solved in five pages. Yeah. Because <laughs> Pip's a good detective, and Belle, bless her, bless her little heart, she is not a good detective. She tries. Um, she's I mean, very intuitive, though. I like she, appreciated yeah, she's that got about her, her moments, but you know, uh, it's different in a way because Pip was always an outsider, at least until the third book. So she had kind of some objectivity in the cases she was looking into. Whereas, like Belle, the whole thing is about Belle, and she is not at all objective. Um, she, I mean, her personality kind of came with the book idea because I knew that, like, in order to tell this story, I needed a character who had been entirely shaped by her mum's disappearance 16 years ago. Um, so Belle um, is not friendly to anyone. She's mean to everyone. She's sassy as all hell, and I love her. She is very sassy. I love mm, her, yeah. too. I kind of think she's a little bit of wish fulfillment as to how I could act in public, <laughs> but I can't because I'm British and I'm really polite. And I say sorry like 12 <laughs> times in every conversation, but I wish I could be a Belle. Yeah, and I like her growth in the book is so moving too because of it. And it's like how she kind of, well, I don't want to spoil, but like mm. how she changes over the course of the book as she discovers she kind of unlocks this mystery a little bit. Yeah, really character great. Too. There's a character yeah, arc, yes. guys. Yeah, I mean, she. you might find her unlikable, but hopefully you will secretly love her. Like but I like do. you never, you always understand why she is, is the way, the she way that she is. is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's more like you'll, you'll be looking at the page and you'll be like, oh, Belle, I just want to throttle yeah. you because you're so stupid, but I love you. It's like I want to pet your hair, but also give you a little shake Yeah, too. bless your soul, but oh, God, you're <laughs> annoying. Yeah. That's kind of the reaction I want you to have with all of my main characters, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are the best kind of main characters. Because exactly. it means you care. That's yeah. one of the hardest things as a writer is to get the reader People to, to genuinely invest. care yeah, yeah, yeah. about the character. The worst thing is that you could be bored by one of the main characters. That yeah. means I failed. Yes. So if you want to punch them through the pages, I take it as a <laughs> win. <laughs> Sometimes it's just as good for the reader to hate the character. Yeah, I As think long so as too. it's like a passionate feeling. Yeah. So... Okay, when, speaking of craft, when you're starting a new story, where does it first start to take shape for you? Are you somebody who thinks about like the mystery element first or is it the main character or do they kind of just like arrive I, together? For me, it's always concept first, like the hook. So for the reappearance of Rachel Price, um, the first thing that actually came to me was the title. So I was, I was walking my dog he is a cocker spaniel because I know you're about to ask, and yes, he is he a good is so boy. He's so cute. Yeah, he looks like Lord Farquaad from Shrek. <laughs> when he's had a bad haircut and he's got like angry little ginger eyebrows, and he's so judgmental. I love him. His little ears. Yeah, he's my only co-worker, so he's got a little bed in my office. He's <laughs> he doesn't really do much, to be fair. He does not get a cut of the royalties because he hasn't earned them. Um, so anyway, reverse thing. I'm do we're doing a lot of tangents. Remember when we talked about tangents. cactuses for like half an hour? <laughs> so I was walking Dexter, who looks like Lord Farquaad, and I was listening, obviously, to a true crime podcast. As one does. As one uh, does, uh, like, obsessively throughout the day. Um, and I just had, like, a little thought, like... Um, I was thinking lots of these podcasts are called the disappearance of mm -hmm. blank blank and I just I just tried something out in my head I wasn't even committed to it. I was like what if you just flip reversed that and it was the reappearance of blank blank and then my head was like you're a genius that is so good 
Um, so then I was like, but the name would have to have alliteration in order to sound cool. So I tried out a few. I was like, Rosie Parker, no, no, no. Like Rosita Place, no, no, no. And then we came to Rachel Price and I was like, yes, I've done it. The reappearance of Rachel Price, it's genius. Um, and then I just had to write a whole damn book to go with. <laughs> The title. Easy. It was easy. It wasn't. The most joyous part is always the brainstorming. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, yes. Now I have to no, actually do the to thing. To sit in front of my computer. Yeah, that's the worst. must. Yeah. So, um, so I guess title and hook kind of came together because you can kind of tell what's going to happen from... It's not a spoiler that there's a lady called Rachel Price <laughs> and she reappears. Or does she? That, like, that does happen. Um, so then I just had to do the hard work of filling in the rest of the blanks and it's quite a long book so there was a lot of blanks um i did a lot of research i listened to a lot of true crime podcasts documentaries um there's a couple that kind of gave me really good jumping off points um and it was it was fun i i really like doing the plotting and the planning because i'm an obsessive plotter so i don't start writing even like one word of the book until every single scene is structured and I can run the whole thing like a movie in my head. Um, so, and it means that I can get to buy some really cool stationery, which <laughs> is the why I do it. So I will write everything out on index cards and I lay them out on my floor, normally in like four columns because I write in a four act structure. Um, so I just look like a psycho with cards <laughs> all over my, the floor of my office. Are the cards color coded? <laughs> like a little bit. I started trying to be color coded, but then I ran out of pink. So I had to just go with what I had. I know I was really upset. I could have ordered more, but um, I had so many blue. Yeah. yeah. So it's fi it's fine. I'm not I'm not salty about it at all. Um, so then I would just when I'm writing, writing, I will then just go pick up which chapter I'm on for the day, take it to my desk with me. It's not far, it's just like two steps. Yeah, um, yeah. and then type that one up. That's misery and hell. And just keep, keep plugging away until I reach the end. And then I'm like, oh, yes, I'm done. So you don't jump around at all. You write. No. Straight. I think that would be hard in a mystery specifically. So much layering goes into it. No, yeah. I have to write like chronologically. I think people yeah. that do it, like jump around or don't plan, are they bring me out in hives. I don't understand I, them. Yeah. I, they're all Scrivener writers too. They write in a... Yeah, well, I don't. I'm I'm a Microsoft Me Word too. girly. Yeah, I think like if you are somebody who likes to jump around in the story and then write Scrivener different chapters, Scrivener is excellent. But if you have to like build momentum, like you're running downhill. Yeah. Microsoft Word. Although I do use, like, I know that I'm going to have really cool set piece scenes where I can torture the characters <laughs> coming, and I kind of use those as a reward to get through, like, the more boring bits. I'm like, oh, well, in three chapters, I get to do this to Belle, and that's <laughs> going to be great. So we do what we can to get to the end. Writing's hard. Uh, yeah, you, you, you know. Exactly. It's a treat. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like some to. people reward themselves with chocolate. I reward myself with torturing fictional characters. <laughs> <laughs> Some hmm. people reward themselves with kissing scenes too. Uh, no. <laughs> Do you want to know? I've really upset a lot of people on tour because I've I've said that um, I actually really hate writing the romance parts. <laughs> and for some reason, I've created like the greatest love story of the 21st century with Pip and Ravi, and I hated every single second of it. <laughs> but you guys love it, so I have to keep doing it now in every single book. It's torture. I know. I so, like, enjoy the book or whatever, but know that when you're reading those parts, <laughs> I was suffering. I will say, as in your role, uh, in my role as your moderator, mm -hmm. I stalked you on the internet, as one does. Yep. And I read an interview you did recently where you said you are not a fantasy reader. You don't like fantasy. Mm, is that true? Like, I do. I do a little bit. I dabble. I tell you what, I'm not into is the romanticy. Ooh. Get rid of the Roma and give me the tasi, and I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll read that bit. But no, I like I like the dragons. I don't like the kissing. But you know, that's fair. Yeah, I, th I think so too. So okay, going back to like the writing process, mm -hmm. do you like? Because <laughs> I would like to know this for myself. <laughs> do you have like all of the clues mapped out in advance, and you mm -hmm. know you don't have to like go back in during revision and layer them in again? Or no, I mean. Like, very occasionally, I'll be like, oh, that's good. I should probably mention that earlier so that we're, like, setting up, up like, a payoff later. But normally, I have every single clue and red herring kind of laid out in these cards before so I know where I'm kind of 
trick you and lead you down the wrong rabbit hole and that kind of thing. I feel like as you're talking in my head, Taylor Swift's mastermind is just like Mm. plain. (laughs) Well, she did write it about me, I've heard. (laughs) Just just kidding. Also, I know what Taylor Swift song you will want to see in the TV show. Don't think I don't see those DMs as well. What's what's the... What's the You all know which song I'm talking about. Yeah, that one. Nobody no crime, huh? Oh. You like that song? <laughs> Let me just say, Taylor Swift songs are very expensive yes. to put in TV shows, so I feel like you need to befriend Austin Swift on Instagram. Isn't he the one? Oh my gosh. Who's now we're really on a tangent. Well, I have got the Eras brother. tour tickets. So what I was hoping is I would just go and then me and Taylor would be best friends. And then she'd say, Would you like this song for free? And I'd say, Oh no, um, yeah you need to like make the friendship bracelets that are just like can we use this song can be nc in a good 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 um how do you guys pronounce that by the way a good 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 um i I have the worst initials for all of my books twerp like yeah (laughs) sounds like an ugly fish rip 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 the reappearance is twerp Trop. 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 I have to say it like an American. Trop. Tr- trop. Ooh, trop. It still does sound like an ugly fish. Yeah. Yeah. I failed on that front. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, sorry, we were in yeah, the Yeah, what were we talking about? <laughs> Let me reverse it. Taylor Swift, mastermind, c- cards, plotting, writing, plotting, Yes, writing. Clues. I have one more writing question for you. Okay. Uh, like, what do you think is the most challenging part about writing a mystery or even just like writing a suspenseful story? I mean, I never get like blocked or stuck because I've planned so thoroughly that when I'm writing, because I can just you are keep going. the mastermind. Well, I don't know about that. And also, I never, I always have really tight deadlines, so I've just <laughs> got to write the thing really quickly. Um, but when I'm in the plotting and planning stage, which is my favorite part because it's like pure creation and I'm just writing down ideas in my notebook, but I'm very like polite even to myself when I do it. I never like fully commit to an idea. I'm always like, what if we did this? Or like, perhaps she could feel like this. I literally never say the word perhaps in real life, but in my notebook is full of perhaps. I'm so British in my notebook. <laughs> Um, and then I like disagree with myself and I'm like, no, that's a stupid idea. Um, but we have fun, me and my brain with that part. Um, but on occasion, like if I haven't had the like wow factor plot twist yet, there's really nothing you can do to force it other than like keep doing what you're doing. I find going on a dog walk really helpful to like jog the plot twist and actually So obviously there's a few plot twists in this one, but the one I'm most proud of, I actually came up with in a heat wave. Really? We sometimes have hot weather in London too. (laughs) It's actually hot. It was hotter in this heat wave than it is today. I mean, I know that means nothing to you. You're (laughs) like, yeah. But in London, we don't have AC. So it was hot, guys. And I was sitting at my desk and I was sweating. um, So sweaty that I had to sit there in my underwear instead. You you Um, reached a new stage of enlightenment. No, I literally did. I was so hot and like dehydrated that I came up with the best plot twist that I put in here. So now I know if I ever get stuck, I've just got to like go to a sauna or something and the heat will the ending is like yeah it's yeah it punches you in the face yeah repeatedly yeah what i like to to do in my books is there's like a slap in the face there's like one twist which like i feed enough to you that you might guess it because i want you to feel clever so like when that happens you're like oh my god i called that one i'm so smart um and then like like maybe like 10 pages later i punch you in the face with something you (laughs) haven't just to bring you back down to earth and make you feel stupid (laughs) that's what i try to do with every book i bring you up and then i crash you right back down every time i read one of your books i'm like i will defeat you holly i will figure out this twist (laughs) and then i never do (laughs) i know so i mean i might start running out of unhinged ideas at some point but um, never (laughs) i'll just go to the sauna Maybe I build one in my house or I just move here. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, good idea. But I'm very pale. I'm going to (laughs) burn. So, okay. On like a slightly more serious note, um, one of the criticisms that you see a lot with true crime is the way like media and documentaries and podcasts can like erase victims or Mm -hmm. sensationalize them and, you know, 
ethically questionable way. Um, and one of the things I really appreciate appreciate about your books is that you like never shy away from that subject, and you yeah. actually do show that happening on the page. So I'm wondering if that was something that you knew you wanted to set out to do just from the start or why you felt like it was important to include it. Yeah, I mean, I'm very conscious that I talk about true crime as like an inspiration as it were, but I've never said any specific case that has like, that has fed into any of my books because I'm very conscious of that line between like entertainment or like these are real life people. Um, and it's definitely something that in particular this book, we, we talk about um, the true crime is presented to us as though it's factual and everything happened the way they're presenting it, but it's not. It's just another form of storytelling and like they can tell whatever story they want to. They can make you feel like this guy, oh, he must be innocent when he's definitely guilty. I'm looking at you, the staircase. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and actually that one is particularly interesting because I think one of the editors on the original show was dating the guy. So obviously they yeah. they wanted you to think he was innocent. Um, and that's like an attitude that this book is very aware of that the documentary is presenting a narrative and it, it's a story and um, yeah, it's not it's not factual. And that's something that um, plays a role, plays a role in certain plot twists later might on. Might be a theme. It might, yeah, you might notice a little something, something <laughs> on that. Um, okay, so on a much more random note, uh, I like random. Is it about <laughs> cactuses again? Cacti. No, well, it could be. Okay. The question is, what's something from the U.S. that you wish you could export to the U.K.? Trader Joe's! <laughs> <laughs> I went in for the first time this trip, and I've got, I've got so much good trail mix. <laughs> they even put chocolate in it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Welcome to America. <laughs> Thank you. I've had a great time. I'm getting so much culture. I went to IHOP as well. <laughs> Oh, what did yeah. you get at IHOP? Well, pancakes, obviously. But um, I'm gluten intolerant, so I had to get gluten. But like, I was so surprised they had gluten free ones. I it was it felt like my birthday. IHOP. So I had to eat them. I felt a little bit sick after. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had a long car trip, and that's when we found out that Rachel Price had hit number one on the New York Times Yay. list. So there was lots of screaming, and then I felt even more sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those pancakes were sitting heavy in the belly, put it that way. I hope mm. so good. And yet, just a few regrets after, yeah, yeah, yeah. always. Exactly. Um, okay, so what's something that you think the U.S. needs from the U.K.? Oh, I feel like I've talked about, oh, do you know what? Our chocolate is just better. I don't know what it is. And also, we don't put, like, chemicals in our tap water. So, like, we can drink that. I think that's a pretty good thing. I mean, you can drink our tap water. You just yeah. won't want to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, that's pretty useful. Um, I don't know. But, like, there are so many things that I'm like, the, um, the Americans have got this one right. Yeah. For example, <laughs> when you walk into a building, you would call this the first floor. Because, right. Right. In the UK, you're not going to believe this. You go up the stairs, and that's the first floor. This is the ground floor, and then upstairs is the first floor. It's disgusting. I don't get it. I hate it. I guess it has its own logic. God bless America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll keep you, Holly. Yeah. <laughs> You're ours now. You yep. can't go back. Well, I have to, because but, I think it would be illegal <laughs> for me to stay here. They're, they're going to deport me. But they let me into the country, and I'm surprised, to be honest. Yeah. So, Did we maybe tell them a little white lie when I we did. were coming in. I lied to the border <laughs> agent. He, he was like, are you here for work or leisure? And I, I suddenly didn't know what to say. I was like, um, uh, um, uh, I'm a tourist. Because I was thinking, like, I'm on a book tour. So I am a tourist. Um, and then he drilled in and he was asking a lot more questions. And I just panicked. And I went, I'm on a book tour. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say. <laughs> And then he was like, oh, you're fine. Um, I think they enjoy the power that they have to make you a yeah, little Yeah, I think he liked it. He, he the, liked the immigration officers at Heathrow are also a tough crowd. Do, do, yeah, well, yeah, they're not. You don't want to crack a joke in front of them. <laughs> I tried. Did Went down like, um, yeah. well, I was going to use a phrase then that we use in the UK, but I'm not because this is recorded. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and uh, we're learning lots of things, me and my publicist, that are just so similar, but not. Like, for example, you would say, it's not to be sneezed at. We say, it's not to be sniffed at. <laughs> it's different, but almost the same. Yeah. 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 I learned, I've learned so many things. I wonder which was the original. Maybe neither. Maybe neither. <laughs> I think sneeze is weird. I think w sniffed out makes more sense. That. Yeah. But that's I fine. I haven't like, used that in a sentence in a long time. 
Nothing. Oh, I, I'm often sniffing at things. Yeah. It's just snotty <laughs> individual. Um, I have one last anyway, question we've for you. Really gone down a I rabbit know. hole here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're talking about my bodily fluids. Um, I have one last question for you. So if now your time is coming, so if you guys have any questions that have been percolating, mm-hmm. um, what are you reading or watching while you've been on tour? Because this is now week two of tour. Uh, are you... d- I have no time. Yeah. I thought I was gonna have time. I like. I was. I. I was just writing a book, and the TV show that I was watching as to like switch my brain off was The Walking Dead. I was rewatching The Walking Dead. <laughs> I love zombies. I love gore. Um, but I just like to relax with the one I of the most like stressful to relax shows. with guts being pulled out on the screen. Um, but I was devastated because I downloaded a few and it's on a different network in the US and I wasn't allowed to watch them. I know, curse you international distribution rights. Um, so, And I really haven't had time to do anything while on tour. I read like a page and then I'm unconscious because I'm so tired. I did just finish reading um, Blake Crouch, Dark Matter. Ooh. It's 5B, there's science in that. I felt smart reading it. Um, yeah, and I've just started Scythe by Neil Schusterman. Am I saying that word right? I kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, but like literally the first page and then I keep passing out, so. You've now reread it 15 times, so you're just like, I'm gonna yeah, do it I, I'm one of those, I do read the same sentence like 15 times and I'm like, hey, I know this. Do you want to, you should describe book tour a little bit. It is like, it's a journey. So let's put it this way. Uh, well, it depends how long you guys want to chat to me in the line, but I'll probably be here until a time, probably like 10 p.m. maybe, ish, earlier. Okay, well, it depends. In Chicago, they kept me there until 1 a.m. So, and then and then you get up at like maybe 5 a.m. to head to the airport for a new plane. I've been on lots of flights. Mm. I pass out on those as well. Um, and then you arrive in a new place and then you're like, whoa, it's hot here. Yeah. <laughs> I was wearing jeans and a hoodie when I arrived here. I'm really bad about turning my key cards back in. So inevitably there comes uh, a time in the tour where I can't remember what my room number is. And I'm just like randomly trying a million different doors. key cards. I haven't tried Have that, yet, that but yet, but I've still got time. So yeah. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, on this tour, I've collected maybe like 300 friendship bracelets already. Aww. I love them. I'm going to take them all home, but it's getting really hard to shut my suitcase. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, I have to sit on that and wiggle to get the clasps to go <laughs> down. So, yeah, it, it's well, fun. What's been your favorite discovery, like food-wise or just, like, hanging out in America? Like, what's been your fave? Well, Aside I, from Trader Joe's. Tr- yeah, I just, I'm a trader hoe now. Someone taught, <laughs> I got taught that phrase as well. I know, I was like, what would the British version of Trader Joe's be? It'd be like, Trader Joseph's or something. I don't, we just, I mean, we have stores with healthy snacks. Like, we've got that. But not but Trader Joe's. It, no, it's nothing like Trader Joe's. Um, what was the question again? Oh, like what? Oh, what like what's a new new to you restaurant or new to you experience? Well, again, I don't really have time to go out for dinner. We've yeah. done some like takeout. We've done some room service, but um, I had Chipotle for the first time. <laughs> But I ate it really close to my event last night and then I felt kind of sick the whole time because <laughs> I ate too much. So yeah. I've come today like a little bit hungry instead of like too full because <laughs> I think that's the preferred way. Keeps you clear. Yeah, exactly. Um, All right. Do you guys, does, is anyone brave enough ready for question? to stand Who's up and ask a question? Who's going to be first? Do they need a you- Okay, we'll repeat the question. That depends on us hearing it. Let me just clear my ears out. Do you want to pick Alex or am I picking? Oh, no, you pick. So what's your favorite serial killer and why? Who's my favorite serial killer? Yeah. Holy moly. I'll, I'll slightly flip reverse that and I'll say, who was I most glad that they finally caught? And that's the Golden State Killer. Yeah. May he rot in hell forever. Because um, that one was, um, what was her name? Michelle McNamara, who was, I think, a journalist. And she was convinced that he was a cop. Um, I think she wrote a book about it. And he's actually the first, I think, killer that they found through like family DNA, like those 23andMe or Ancestry.com sites. And I think that's pretty cool. A little bit invasive. I have not put my DNA in one of those sites just in case I ever want to dabble in murder. <laughs> just in case. Um, but yeah, yeah, Golden State Killer. Not that I'm a fan of his work. I'm a fan that he's now behind bars where he belongs. Yeah. Um, 
Do you? Okay. Oh, of course. Okay, so uh, obviously, you know. You've got the microphone now. <laughs> I have the power. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Oh, okay, so obviously you're Swifty, right? And Obvi you have Air yeah, Stewart yeah. tickets. Yeah, I and, am. And we have a new Air coming, the Tortured Poets <laughs> Yeah, <department>. soon. <laughs> and so I want to ask, what's like your favorite Air and like favorite song? Good question. I'm an Evermore girly. <gasps> but like, I love Evermore, but I also want to cherry pick my favorites from each album. And I'm, I want to break the rules. I really love Antihero and I really love Champagne Problems. To be fair, I just Taylor can't write a bad song, so I kind of like all of them. So I'm also just entering an Olivia Rodrigo phase as well. <laughs> I I feel like um what's the song that she just wrote? Oh, So American. I feel like that's quite a good song for the ship in this book. Read it and tell me what you think. For the inevitable adaptation. Yeah, wow, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We move, we move. There may be a reason I described Rachel Price to look exactly like Reese Witherspoon. I was trying something. It didn't work. She passed on the film rights. She didn't want it. But I'm a hustler. What can I say? She's a fool. Yeah, next time I'll just have to describe another character that looks exactly like Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> One day, Reese. Where's the camera? One day. <laughs> Any more questions? Should we go this one at the front? Uh, how Hello. long does it usually take you to write a book? Okay, this is an interesting one. So for me, the actual writing, so I'm typing up a sentence, it's fast. Like, um, I can actually tell you the weeks of every single book because I'm a nerd and I remember. So Good Girl's Guide to Murder was 10 weeks. Good Girl, Bad Blood was six weeks. Oh, tough times. Uh, as Good as Dead was about 10, 11 weeks. Five Survive was about 10. Rachel Price was more like 12 or 13 weeks. She's thick, that's why. Um, and then I just wrote a book in six weeks. I didn't really want to have to write it that fast, but I don't know if you know, I had an American tour booked in, so I had to skedaddle on that one. You made it work. Yeah, but that's not, it doesn't take me just that amount of time to create the book. I will research and plot for longer than I'm writing. So. I'd say it takes me like four or five months to s from like the very start, like coming up with the concept to finishing and handing it in and then being like, I never want to see it again, ever again. But then I have to because of edits and stuff. Hello. Uh, talking about one of your books that doesn't get the recognition that it definitely deserves, uh, Five Survive. Oh, justice for Five Survive. <laughs> uh, what was the inspiration behind Five Survive and Red's character? I mean, um, so the, the reason I wanted to write that book is kind of harks back to my childhood of watching 24, which is a show where it, it unfolds in real time. So there's 24 episodes and each episode is an hour long and what's happening in the world takes the same amount of time for you to watch it. I've explained that really terribly. So anyway, I wanted to write a book that unfolded in the same time it took to read it. So I just arbitrarily said, I think it takes about eight hours to write a book. So I was like, okay, I have eight hours. So I'm going to start at like 10, finish at 6 a.m. Is that eight hours? Math is hard. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's right in the book. Um, so I had to come up with some kind of limited location where they were going to be trapped because they couldn't really move much in that time. So that's kind of the jumping off point. Red, again, was almost trying to be a very different character to Pip. She's very, very different. Um, but I will say I, um, a lot of my main characters have like a little nugget of me in them. And I learned a lot about myself after writing Red. I was like, oh, that's why you are the way that you are. Things make sense now. So I do love her, but hate her as well. <laughs> Hello. What got you into reading? I mean, writing. What am I into writing? What got you into writing? Oh, what got me into writing? Um, well, I was either going to be a writer or a serial killer, and I think I picked <laughs> I think I picked the career path that pays a little better. I just keep that one as my side hustle. Um, I mean, I think it was fairly obvious. I was just a weird kid, and I started writing short stories when I was young. Um, there's, a, there's a story my parents like to tell where they bought like a really nice leather bound red notebook. And I used to write little stories in it for my little sister, like bedtime stories. And they thought it was the cutest thing that I was like, I finished another story, Olivia. Um, she, my little sister, this book is actually dedicated to her. So I, sh they would, they would like take the book from me, hand it to her, she'd read them, go to sleep. Um, and then my parents read the stories. <laughs> 
it was even worse than you're thinking. I was right. I was like ten, and I was writing stories about like cannibalism, <laughs> and letting my seven-year-old sister read them. And she loved every she single loved one. She loved every single second. So whatever's wrong with me, it's wrong with her too. But um, I think it was very clear from early on that I had to do it. I had to have some outlet for this this darkness inside me. So. I'm glad I found a safe avenue, and you'll seem to like it, so stop laughing. Whatever's wrong with me, you like it, too. <laughs> Where's the um, hello? What advice would you give to an author who's just starting out in their writing career? Um, I would say if you feel like it's hell and this is the worst thing ever, that's normal. Um, my best advice, I think, is I... I didn't always know this, like when I was writing my first book, I didn't realize I was doing this, but I structure my books basically like they're a screenplay. I kind of write my books as a screenwriter. Um, and I think those those beats and those rules can be really useful for like creating the most satisfying story. So if you want to teach yourself about screenwriting in an easy way, um, you go to the place where you can teach yourself any life skill, YouTube. Um, <laughs> And there are channels that do video essays about really popular movies like Batman, and they'll break it down. They'll be like, this is act one. This is why Batman is sad here, and stuff like that. So the two I recommend are Lessons from the Screenplay. I love that one. Yeah, it's fun. They're really interesting It's educational, but they're fun. And then the other one is Just Write, like W-R-I-T-E. They're, they're good jumping off points. So, And that is some good advice from me. I could have just said, like, enjoy it. Let, let it come from the soul. No, nope, go on YouTube. What's your favorite true crime podcast? Mm, I mean, the one I feel most fondly towards is Serial because that kind of was my jumping off point, and I don't think I would have written A Good Girl's Guide to Murder without it. But um, I find comfort in Crime Junkie. They do, like, a different case every episode, but, um, yeah, I like them. Good people. Some true crime podcast hosts are not good people, have so I don't recommend their ones. Have you listened to Ghost Story yet? Go no. I think it's, like, the host is... Uh, English, I want to say. Oh, I probably know him. There's only five of us. Yeah. <laughs> there's like Small me, country. Harry Styles, the Small king. little kingdom. Yeah. Um, but there's like a surprise Hugh Dancy in it too because it involves his family and it's really... Oh, funny. I've heard it advertised, I think. Yeah, it's Is it really about good. his wife's grandma or something? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah, so I like the ghosts. spookies too. Yeah. yeah, I think you would enjoy it. I do. I like a haunted house. Shame I don't live in one. I know, so rude. But hello. Hi. Um, I know you said you don't like writing romance all that much, but would you consider ever writing a Pippin Ravi novella? Oh, another question lots of people bully me on the internet with. <laughs> um, it's not in the cards right now, but what I will say is if, big if, we get to make the TV show and do the whole series, then we may get to write a little like um, reunion scene between a certain Pip and Ravi. But yeah. that depends on you binging season one over and over and over so that we get, to, yeah, and okay. And telling deal. all of your friends yeah. and your family make, members. Make, force everyone you know to watch it like seven times. Bring it up to I the baristas. I don't care if you're watching it. Put it on mute in the background. Go on with your day. But then, and then we can, then we can see if we can have a little reunion for you. I love hey that. Girl. Just love Hello. Um, out of all of the characters you've written, who's your favorite? Ooh. I mean, I think Belle is my favorite. I feel bad on Pip because I put that girl through some horrible stuff. And also, like, I'm still very much in Pip's head because we've been working on the TV show, so I can't escape her. Um, but Belle was just so much fun. She's just so horrible. I love her. <laughs> She has some iconic lines in this book. There's one of my favorite scenes is a family dinner and the film crew think it'd be a really good idea to film this. It's after Rachel Price reappears again. It's not a spoiler because it's in the title. Um, and they think it'd be great to have like a celebratory dinner. Um, and it does not go according to plan. There is tension everywhere. There are evil looks being thrown across the table. Barbed comments. It's delicious. I love it. It just descends into hell. Basically. I know. You're going to hate reading this. You're going to be clenching your butts reading this one. <laughs> It is so awkward. You're welcome. I had to clench writing it, so. Uh, 
Hi. Hello. Um, what book are you most proud of writing? Ooh, I mean, I think I'm going to say Rachel Price because for some reason this book was hell to write. I was so miserable writing this book. I did notice in your acknowledgments you yeah. talked about it being a tough I was one. a shell of a person. That, that I, I think it's because I was trying to be a bit ambitious. Uh, there's a lot going on. It was really long. And I had a ski trip booked. And I had to finish the book before. And it just wasn't ending. So I had to write like 8,000 words three days in a row. And I actually... Uh, I, I think I was writing it until like 4 a.m., finally finished after working for like 72 hours straight, like without sleep, sent it to my agent, didn't have time to go to bed, packed for the ski trip and went to the airport. <laughs> I know, it's, it's slightly chaotic, but um, we did it. She's here, so now I can say I love her. I never want to have to read her ever again. She put me through hell, but um, actually, do you know what? I'll phrase it as that meme that you guys might have seen from the Great British Bake Off. Have you seen the one where he says, started making it, had a breakdown, bon appetit. <laughs> and that applies to Rachel Price, so. Hi. Um, Hello. So do you think there's going to be like a cameo of like Pip or like Red in any like future book? Is that like in the cards? Oh, I hadn't thought about that. I mean, it's going to be complicated because there's a British and an American <laughs> Pip. So like, what do I do? A Canadian one or, <laughs> or like Australian? Is that halfway? I don't know. I feel like you're getting into, did anyone watch the show Orphan Black? Yes, I did. It's like Orphan Black territory. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's not in the cards now, but maybe someday. Like, if I run cool. out of money and I need to, like, <laughs> bring back... Yeah, I'll bring Pip back. for. A, I'm a sellout, so, yeah, I would do. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Who's got the mic of doom? Hello. Hello. Okay, um, so out of all the books, books you've written, which one was the most fun to write? Do you know what? The, the one that was most fun was Five Survive. And I think it's... At times, I was really mad at myself because the whole concept is it's, it unfolds in real time, which means I couldn't skip anything. Like, I had to describe every single second. I couldn't... I, there, were no, there were no paragraph breaks. It literally goes, like, everything. But the reason I liked it is because I got to make the main character go to the bathroom on page, not just once, <laughs> twice. And they never let you do that. Like, think about it now. Have you ever, like, had a description of a character peeing in a book? No. <laughs> but it's in Five Survive Twice. This is what we call literature. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shakespeare, watch out. Hi. Hello. Um, when you were writing Five Survive, did you have an idea for what the curtain design actually was? I've been, I've been bullied this a lot on tour. <laughs> um, yeah, the reason I did that was to annoy you on purpose, just like it annoys Red. So clearly I was successful. Um, I picture it like, you know, SpongeBob SquarePants. And you know, like sometimes the screen comes up with that like purple screen and there's like white flowers, like a, an outline. It's like something like that. I hope you can now sleep at night, now that you've got that answer. Hi. Hello. Um, I was just wondering, what's one thing you can't live without and why? Um, oxygen. <laughs> okay, but I know, we all have a weakness. I, I need it to breathe. Um, also, like, water. Yeah. Stay hydrated, folks. Um, uh, my serious answer, I guess, would be... I really love my PlayStation, but I never, I never get to, oh, sh I was meant to probably say like my husband or my dog, I was wasn't I? Say I was like, your husband? Oh yeah, my family members, not my, my PlayStation. <laughs> Oops. But um, I never have time to play it anymore. And my, my old ritual used to be once I finished writing a book, I'd get to play PlayStation for like a, a few days. And I'm like, technically it's homework. But um, it's not. But um, now I'm so busy that I just have to go into the next project. So I know what a sad life Hard I to have. Be successful. I know. Everyone, get out their tiny violins. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Okay, so I was just wondering, um, is there a reason why you end your books in such an agonizing <laughs> cliffhanger, like As Good as Dead and Five Survive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me more. Um, <laughs> I do it for this reaction exactly. That's why I do it. I want you to be miserable. I want to put you through hell, and it works. I literally plan how to make you mad at me, and I'm very good at it. 
but we can still be friends. It's fine. But also, like, I'm not going to change that. So good luck with all of my future books. Brace yourselves. Yeah, brace. Clench. You're going to be prepared. Yes, but I have you. a question first, which oh. is um, for those of you who haven't discovered the awesomeness of Alex Bracken's oh. <laughs> work, um, tell us a little bit about your books and give oh. them a little introduction to this world. I can do Hello. a quick pitch for you guys and we can go back to the questions. Lore is the perfect book for you if you've ever wanted to read a book that is like Percy Jackson meets The Hunger Games. Yep. It's about these families descended from ancient Greek heroes in modern day New York who are hunting gods to steal their power and immortality. And the main character, Lore, is drawn back into this world after leaving it under tragic circumstances. And she gets reunited with her childhood friend who is quite handsome now, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And then Silver in the Bone is for you if you love Arthurian or Celtic mythology. It is about a girl who is competing with her annoyingly handsome rival to find a magical ring to save her brother from a terrible curse. Mm. My quick pitches. Very good for if you're a nerd for Celtic yeah. mythology or Greek mythology. If you do like enjoy like romantic like fantasy, unlike yeah. somebody who will not be named, that's perhaps your books are yours, you. yours has the right balance. You're, you're fine. <laughs> no. We're friends. Yes, romantic fantasy, not romance. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah. I have a question right over here. Hello. Um, so I was wondering what kind of books you read as a kid and what like maybe if it inspired the way you write now well i i read harlan coben books when i was like 10 i did read stephen king and now he slides into your dms i know i did like i did read fantasy i feel like now everyone thinks i hate fantasy no, i right. love fantasy <laughs> just no snogging in it please Get back Stabbing. to the dragon. Yes, 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 snogging. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, there was a book series. I now can't, I think it was called like The Chronicles of, no, that's Narnia. I did not read those. <laughs> there was like a, f I really can't remember it now, other than I think the illustrator was called Chris Rydell, and that's really not useful. But there was a fantasy book series that I loved. I was obsessed with the, them. The Chronicles of Prudian? No, it was Chronicles of Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> one of them, one of the books I think was called, it had a main character called Twig. Look, I any? might have hallucinated this book series. Who knows? But, it um, might have been what you wrote for Olivia. No, no. maybe, maybe. There's a know. subreddit dedicated to identifying books. Yeah, I need that. I need that in my brain though. right now. I, I just like all horrible things, but like um, fantasy, but like people have to die for me to be interested. So <laughs> I think I found myself in the right genre. <laughs> Where's the mic gone now? Hello. Hi. Um, when you were writing a Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, did mm -hmm. you have all three books planned out already, or did you go like one by one? This is a very good question. Yeah. Um, and the answer is no. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder was supposed to be a standalone. Um, it was not meant to be a series at all. It was it was pitched as a standalone. It finished there, um, and then it came out and it kind of did well. And they were like, "Have you ever thought about?" doing a sequel and I was like well could you have given me a bit more of a heads up because they were like we want to publish it on this schedule and I was like oh so that's why I had to write Good Girl Bad Blood in six weeks um, that's hardcore it was rough um, so no the first when the first book came out I didn't know that I was doing it but then from that point when they said do you want to do a sequel I was like okay but I want to do two and three so from that point I planned book two and three together so there's a lot of book three seeded into book two but I wanted to make you think that I planned it from the start so I went back through book one and I found like any small gaps I'd left or any like hints and I like wrote back to them so that you'd think that I'd done it from the start Mastermind. and then I see lots of people making comments like oh my god Holly Jackson is a genius because now I understand the title of the first book. Now I finished the third book and I'm like, ha ha ha, it's fake. I didn't plan it. I'm not a genius. I'm just sneaky. Hi. Hello. What's your favorite city you've toured so far? Ooh, well, I'm here. So if I don't say right here, you're all, there's a lot of you and there's only one of me. I reckon I could take on like this side of the room. <laughs> But not this side. There's a lot of you. Um, it's actually nice to be in hot weather. I left London and it was grey and raining. So I just wish someone would have told me. Have you, like, what? Which are the cities that you've 
visited that you've never visited before? I'd never been to Boston before. I'd never been to Chicago. I'd never been a lot of places, really. I've done California before and San Francisco, but um, I'd never done Roseville, is where I was yesterday, or Sac. Roseville is in Sacramento, isn't it? Do you know what? My geography is very poor anyway, so this is hard for me. I mean... America is yeah. big. I don't know if you guys know that, but um, <laughs> it's pretty big. I, I mean, I think everyone in the room just nodded. Yeah, that it's, is it's, it's a Sacramento. large country. Oh, really? Yeah, yes. I come from a very small country where you can basically walk five minutes and you've hit the end, so... Um, yeah, um, uh, we're going to say here, obviously. This is the perfect place. I love it here. I think that's the perfect answer to end things with yeah. because we want to get you upstairs. <gasps> to the talking. torture chamber yes, upstairs. So <laughs> <laughs> We're going to let our authors go up first. Are we going now? You should have color wristbands. The red group is going to go first, but you need to give us about five minutes before you go upstairs. So red is first. Before we do that, guys, let's, uh, we'd like to take a picture. Um, I'm going to have them, I'm going to do a picture, a picture with them holding up their books and everything, if that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Can everybody hold up your books? We'd like to take a nice picture. Yeah, let's do that. We'll show you. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't work. No. I don't think so. Come on. Okay. We're going to scoot past through this door here in just a sec. Okay, guys. Um, the first group, we're gonna we're gonna take them upstairs. And the way to get upstairs is if you go out the side entrance, you'll see some cones that will show you how to get. There's a staircase at the end of the building, and it'll take you right up. And the first group is uh, those of you with the red wristband can go first. And the rest of you, if you want to just kick back or go out in the parking lot, whatever you'd like to do. And then I'll call the next group, which will be green as soon as we get, uh, you can go that way too. Yeah, of course. Okay. Here. Yeah. All right, let me, let me just, there we go. Perfect. 